Let's go. I'm better than ever, they never been better than I. Regarded the hardest, and I ain't even reaching my prime. They hate that I'm great and they fake and I'm real as they come. So sit back and let me show you how the shit is done. My composition, my propositions, I'm raping the system. I'm killing the competition, and all of y'all are my victims. Eyes and ooze as I'm ripping the instrumental. Lyrical individual, never been sentimental. I'm so hot every time that beat drop. And when I say I'm raping the system. What is good, boxing fans and gamers? This video is sponsored by www.amway.com slash Matthews Market. For all your nutritional supplement needs and all things beauty supplies, please visit www.amway.com slash Matthews Market. Just so you guys know, if you don't know who I am, I am Fight Night's Finest, the selfie commentator, and of course, there's another Fight Night Champion online ranked match. That's what I do on my channel, but of course, sometimes I like to come with an occasional topical commentary video for something that's just been bugging me or something that's been on my mind. So, I know I got a couple of guys who basically always leave comments. I can always expect to see them in the comment section, whether it's Marble, Sandal, Matthew, Verno, Keenan. Flex B1923. Oh, There's so many of you guys who always leave comments. I can't basically get to all of you. But I noticed there's about 200 to 300 people who usually watch my videos. And I want to hear from you guys who don't leave comments. If you have a YouTube account or you just have a Gmail account, sign in and leave a comment because I want to hear from you not only on this topic but just from you guys on a regular basis. I want to know who you are. So into today's topic, but before I get into that, let me talk about this match real quick. You're going to want to watch the entire match because this guy is one of those guys who like to talk trash in between rounds. I'm not sure if he had a mic or not, but he was definitely taking his time in between rounds to give me his thoughts on how the match was going. This was initially a live commentary, but with this whole thing that's been bothering me, I'd rather much talk about that instead of you guys seeing me um, just you know live commentated so on to today's topic one thing that's really really been bothering me as of lately is this whole theory of racial pride and the main reason I'm talking about it is because regardless to what's going on in the news there's always some type of identification of, of it having to be a black or a white thing whether it's you know things with police or whether it's just politics in general people being defined by their, you know, their regional area and all oh, people from the south does this, people from the north does this, people from the hood are like this, and a lot of the time it's always then after they define you by being in a certain area, oh that's a black thing, or that's a white thing, only Spanish people do that, and then the comments on videos is just people being blatantly racist for no, uh, no apparent reason, oh the coons do this, uh, or only a nigga would do that, or white people this. smell like this white dogs, or all only or crackers would go up there and do that, spear truckers would do this, I go. hate Spanish people, Listen. all the adobos, and, and just people just blatantly being racist to different groups of, um, of people for no apparent reason, and attaching stereotypes to them. And the main reason this bothers me is because why does you have to be defined why do you have to be defined by your race or why, by your skin color at the end of the day we're, we're still all people and I don't understand why there's a need to attach certain things that may be culturally acceptable to one group of people that makes them either odd or it makes them different or it just makes them a type of person that you shouldn't involve yourself with or oh they, this is something bad about them so now every time somebody mentions this group of people I'm gonna bring it up the funny thing about this is um now that I'm in college I've been taking this anthropology class and if that's the whole study of like evolution and you know different groups of people and different cultures and different traditions and while I'm not a fan of the whole evolution theory and whatnot I don't deny facts and I, neither do I deny people to believe in what it is that they want to believe in. But one of the things that I've learned from this class is that before, about, I want to say in about the 1400s, the 1500s, people weren't really getting defined so much by their race about being a black or a white person. It was more about just where you were from like if you're from Rome or you know you're from a different area of the country then that's where your stereotypes were you know where you were attached to it people just say 
bad things about where you're from, but nobody discriminate. I'm not to say that nobody did, but discrimination in terms of race wasn't as big back then. It's, and it, it was stupid. It wasn't until people started to try to classify people into different groups of people, whether it's um, whether it's being a black or a white person, or all people from this region, you know, do these kind of things. They look this certain way, and then you then we'll define them away. by their skin Come color. On. This is and, gotta make it you know, that's one of the big things about classification that was taken away and then right, let's go. redone. But the effects are still up, lingering okay. in today's society where people are still, yeah. even to this day, despite what great leaders have tried to do to get equality for all people, and not even just a black and a white thing, because there's great leaders from other countries who's also tried to get equality for people. A lot of people sit back and they criticize people's traditions or their cultures or where they're from just because it's different and they don't understand it. And I feel it's one of the most ignorant things that you can possibly do is to sit back and define somebody because of what they believe in. Just because you don't understand something doesn't mean that it gives you the right to sit there and talk crazy about somebody. Like one thing I learned about voodoo is that a lot of the time, you know, in, in the Christian religion or just in really religion in general, just people always look at what's supposed to be the good side about it. But voodoo is more known for the bad stuff or the bad side of it. And the only reason why it's looked at like that here in this country is, you know, you see Pacquiao's mom in the arena doing all these weird rituals is because she just wants to make sure that good things happen for him during the fight. That's the main reason why she carries herself like that. But, you know, a lot of people don't understand that's just how it is in that type of religion. But all they're known for is doing witchcraft and doing bad things. And so the biggest difference between, like, a Christian religion and a, a, a religion like voodoo is because they teach you how to conjure bad things as well as do the good things, and most of them don't even do bad things to, to people. Well, in this country, you know, one of the questions that was posed was, do you not think that, you know, your religious leaders don't know how to contact or get in, in contact with bad spirits or things like that? And it's, it's, just a, it's just a question that most people wouldn't even bother to ask themselves. So, one thing that I really want people, whether it's just people who listen to my channel, or it's just people who, you know, come across this video and decide not to come back. It's just, I just really want you to start treating other people exactly how they deserve to be treated. Like people. Not based on their race, not based on what they say, or not based on their cultures or traditions. But get to know people and get to understand people based on what they show you. And ask questions. Don't sit there and just because you don't understand somebody, you judge somebody. That's another problem I feel like we have a huge thing in society is that people just are such hypocrites. You want to sit back and talk about everybody should be equal and you know you should love everybody but then on the side everybody's hating on somebody else for something that's not even relevant towards what they're hating them all for. Like one thing I notice about people who's in a Christian religion and I'm I technically was Christian, but I believe in other things now. Not to say I don't believe in God, just not in the same principles that I was taught up on. Is that people will sit back and say, oh, you know, right. as a Christian, you're you supposed to love everybody and you're supposed to, to me, spread you if know, you want the love fight, of God to everybody else. Busy out but there, then right? at the same time, you're this fight. you have all these Why? religious because wars with different cultures, like Muslims and other Draw people. Punches. Then you have so many different yeah. breakdowns okay. as to what a Christian could be under this category, and there's this type of Christian based on this type of interpretation. And it's just like, why don't you just try to be a good person and do good things for others? Instead of saying, oh, these freaking Muslims or these Baptists. And I sit back and I listen to this and I'm like, aren't you supposed to just treat everybody equal and just let people know and share what you believe and not criticize somebody else for their beliefs of people? You can't force people to do anything. So your way of trying to get them to convert to what it is that you like is to go back and, dis and, and disgrace their name and talk bad about people. You got people who go to church all the time and the only reason they go to church is to sit there and gossip and talk bad about other people and talk about who's wearing what and you know if you don't show up 
you know, there's a lot of things that I see, and it's like, it's it's so hypocritical. Look here at this defense. I just had to say something about that head movement. We were sitting here toying with him after that because he wanted to get cocky. But um, back to what I was saying, all these people and you know, like, different religions and whatnot, you shouldn't criticize and judge people just because it's not what you believe. And because you don't believe it doesn't mean you should disgrace the media. Really, really sick and tired of appearing it everywhere I go. And I'm sick and tired of people just not acting based on, you know, their own thoughts. Like, why are you doing something because somebody else influenced you to do it? More than anything, only thing that should motivate you to do something is your own experience. And you just wanting to do the right thing. That's why I always get on this channel every once in a while do a commentary like this one where I'm sitting here just expressing some type of thought or something that I see that I know isn't right and I just want people whether it's if it's only the 2,300 people that I reach on this channel if it's only the like the 200 to 300 people who view my videos daily then you know at least I can make a difference in the way people think on this channel now whether you tend to agree with me or not on whether you should be Let's go. Proud about you where like? it is you come from, or you want this based fight? on what ethnic, then let's ethnic get group that you were growing into. This guy's gonna you know, win that's this your fight. own business, you but at least, control, at least give me the you right to, to say control. that, you know, that's a hey, solid listen, viewpoint, that's an unbiased viewpoint, with... and it's a viewpoint that isn't, you know, it isn't judgmental towards anything. I think most of the time people like to either play one side of the fence where it's like, I'm going to be pro this or I'm not for this. Instead of sitting back and trying to take a look at the positives of both sides, people hate people that are neutral because they don't give lead way to either side. And that's the, that's the kind of person I try to be most of the time is neutral. Neutral in the sense of like I'll have a strong opinion on something, but I'll still give like a counterpoint to the other side of the argument. So right now we're going to go ahead. At this point, just look at the scorecards. We was really just, this match was just ridiculous. It was just like this back and forth thing of us trying to figure out what it is, you know, that he wants to do. We gave him everything he's asked for. Said we come to come on to the inside. We come on to the inside, start throwing combinations, start letting the hands go. We box on the outside. It, it, we basically did everything that he wants. And then now it's pretty much, it's time to ring. He's going to sit down and talk. This is another thing. If somebody's better than you or you're not getting your way in something, what, you know, why don't you just sit back and try to find a different way to do it? And I felt this is one of those things that this guy could have done in this game is try to find a different way to do things. And that's the same way I want everybody to pretty much think. Find a different way of thinking. Not a, a, a way of thinking that was preset for you. Do, you can always know how to think based on how you feel. A lot of people tend to think that, you know, your emotions are, are something bad and they lead you in the wrong direction or something. But I personally think the only way for you to ever act is based on your emotions. And we'll watch this uppercut. <laughs> Get you! <laughs> Get you! <laughs> I had to play this three times. Oh, it was just so funny because he's sitting there the whole time taunting, getting cocky, and then you just catch him perfectly on the chin with the power uppercut after hitting him with some nice power shots before then. But um, back to what I was saying. Um, stop, stop thinking in a way that's preset for you. You know, like I was saying about about your emotions. That's where I last left off on is that whenever you sit back, a lot of people think tend to think that your emotions cloud your judgments, but. I find that you find a lot of truth in them also, and it's a real good way to guide you and live your life, and a lot of people tend to think that you should think more logical than anything, but I feel like your logical thoughts come from come from the base of your emotions of knowing what's right and what's wrong. You always know if you're, you're in a position of doing something that's wrong or that's going to hurt somebody else, but it's just knowing what emotions to listen to, you know? I hope, I hope you guys are kind of picking up on what I'm saying because I know I've been a little bit all over the place with this commentary, but 
really just sit back and, and listen to your inner self. I think that you find more truth in there than anywhere else. If you find, if right, everybody just did up. that just you a little bit more, and they don't worry about right so much on, what they were taught relax, and just worried about what out. they felt. You gotta move out there, I feel right? We'll be in a move, better place. Move, I'm move. saying, listen to your positive on, emotions, not your negative breathe. things that you, go. That's you know good. tell you, okay. oh, somebody move did something here. to me, I have to go back and get them, and that's rage and that's anger, and that's that's not a good emotion to listen to a lot of times. But if you tend to think based on more like, man, this is really messed up that this person did this, I really. I really would like to get some form of revenge, but I know that's that's not the right way to handle things. If you sit back and listen to that, that's a logical thought coming from the truth of you knowing right and wrong. I feel like this that's the two type of emotions you have. You know, you have your negative ones that's really like positive and based off of love and compassion, then you have your ones that's based off of like anger and fear. And I think a lot of time anger comes from the fact that we fear somebody's not going to, we're not going to get justice or somebody's going to get away with something. And then that, you know, that gets anger. And it's the same thing with, with racial pride. A lot of people tend to think that, oh, this was done wrong to us and we've been wrong so many times and we've been discriminated against so many times that now I have to group with my own kind and these are the only people I can trust because they're afraid of getting discriminated against. Uh, against again there we go they tend to believe that and i think that's where the whole racial pride thing comes from and why people get so deep into their own history and and trying to show people and teach people what happened so that they don't have fear of it happening again to everyone else it's a good thing to always have knowledge you're only as good as what you know but at the same time it's also better if you sit back and you just take the time to understand yourself and understand others and this way you'll be able to make better decisions now, i'm not saying that you can ever be perfect in that and just always listen to yourself sometimes the negative emotions you know they do get the best of you that's gonna happen that happened to me just the other day where i, you know, I kind of just felt like everything is gonna go wrong at this point it's, Every, there's nothing ever going to be good out there, regardless of the fact that I mean, I'm trying to accomplish some goals by the end of the year, which is just moving out and, you know, following my own dreams of becoming a fighter. That's what I want to do more than anything else. And a lot of times I tend to get discouraged, but I know there's always that fact that comes back to me that's like, you know you have the ability to do this. And all you have to do is work hard and try your best to do what it is that you're trying to accomplish. And it's the same thing, no different than how you treat people. You know deep down inside you shouldn't be joking and making in front of people in order to try to entertain others. And that's another thing. It's just trying to find acceptance so you tease other people regardless of whether it's right or wrong because you feel like it's going to satisfy something else. It's the same thing of racial pride and how we treat each other. We shouldn't treat Don't each other like breathe. that because He's you feel like maybe somebody round. else may look better than me okay. if we were all it, looked upon as equal. Then up, right. these advantages that I have will go away. I just hope you guys really understand where I'm coming from. I'm, I'm pretty much ranting at this point. I'm gonna call the action here for the last, I think it's the last two rounds or the last round here. Into round number seven. I'm not sure where we kind of left off at. I kind of stopped looking at the gameplay. The double jab comes out. We switch back to the orthodox stance. And even though I was boxing pretty effectively from the southpaw stance, I switched back to orthodox because, you know, I just feel a lot more comfortable in the orthodox stance. I don't practice southpaw a lot. I can fight in southpaw. But the distances and the ranges that I go through is, is all pretty much messed up. Power straight lands down the middle, followed by the power right uppercut. Followed by the power right hook to the head. Now we start getting cocky, and then he ends up catching us with a power left hook. We start blocking, we block, and we're backing up. That Philly Show defense is coming into play. We try to clinch. We threw back, which was a big mistake there. We're up against the ropes. We're able to dodge and weave the punches, looking like a young Roy Jones Jr. up against the ropes. And he backs off, and he's like, I'm not going to chase you. 
so now that we're back at full health and we're pretty much okay, we get back to using the jab, three punch combination, straight right hand, followed by the left hook, right hook upstairs, misses. He starts working the body pretty nicely. And we're getting a little low on stamina from all this offensive attack. Power right up hook to the body doesn't land, but the power right hook does. We throw another power shot, end up missing that one. Then he hits us with a power straight, left hook over the top, knocks us down. We fall down to the canvas, and that is our first knockdown of the fight. Of course, we're going to have to eat our own crumb from what we did earlier and watch it three times in a row, which is going to suck. But as soon as we're ready to get ready to get revenge, he does this after the three times of playing it. And he just decides, I got my victory. I got everything that I needed. And he will end up rage quitting because he knows what's going to happen once we get off the canvas. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave your thoughts in the comment section on some of the things that I touched on. If you agree, please like the video. If you disagree, go ahead and dislike the video. It doesn't bother me. Follow me on Twitter for updates on more videos coming out. It's been your boy, Fight Needs Finest, the Sophie Commentator. I'm off this. Peace! Everyone will be watching me. I just can't wait to see that look of panic and fear. <gasps> That's it. That's the look! <laughs>